Hello everyone, welcome to SPSS tutorial for one way repeated measures ANOVA. Um, in this video, you'll learn how and when to conduct a one way repeated measures ANOVA and use the SPSS results to write the APA report section. So, a one way repeated measures ANOVA also known as a within subjects ANOVA, is used to determine whether three or more groups means are different where the participants are the same in each group. So here we have an example of conducting this test. Imagine that a random sample of six men undergo an exercise program and then their cholesterol levels were measured in month one two and three. The question here is that, is there a change in patient's cholesterol level in month one, two and three? Um, since the same group has been measured during three different occasions, we use one-way repeated measures ANOVA. And the null hypothesis is that there is no significant change in patient's level of cholesterol in these three months after undergoing the exercise program. So here um, there are our data, as you can see. And um, we have one independent variable, which are the patients corresponding with the three levels. And so in order to conduct it, go ahead and go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and then Repeated Measures. Here in Within Subject Factor Name box, um, type the name of your factor, which I'm going to call it practice effect. It's just a label and doesn't have anything to do with the actual analysis. So we have three levels. So um, I'm going to type three and now I'm going to send this factor to this box over here. And then I'm going to define this factor by clicking on the find button. So in this window, SPSS is asking for three variables within this factor. You can do them one by one or just all at a time, just by click, just by shift and K. I prefer to do them one by one. And then click on plot. Here it makes more sense to put factors in horizontal axis and add that to my plots and error bars as well. And just click continue. And click on post hoc. And as you can see, we're not given the options of doing the post hoc test. So just click continue. However, I can do that. I can do that just by select estimated marginal means. I can select practice effect and overall, but because I want to compare means. Um, so I select this and I, I have three options here. LSD has no correction. So uh, I'll select uh, Bonferroni correction. Uh, um, although it might be too conservative for this data, um, it's okay. Just click continue. So, and I'm, I'm going to click on options and I'm going to ask for descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and maybe homogeneity tests. Um, I can have other things like um, residual plot to see whether my data is normally distributed or not. But these three options would be enough for now. 
Uh, so we can see the results. Um, in first table, we have the names of our factors, month one, month two, and month three. And in second table, we have descriptive statistics, including mean and standard deviations. Um, in third table, multivariate tests, which we're not going to worry about and just move on. And then we have a much less tests of sephoricity, which tests the homogeneity of variance. What we are willing to see in order not to violate the assumptions is the amount of p-value greater than 0.05. So we didn't violate the assumptions of sephoricity because p-value is 0.268. And by looking at epsilon value, if greenhouse geyser was less than 0.75, we would use the greenhouse geyser correction. Here, this amount is 0.657, which is smaller than 0.75. And, but if, if it was greater than 0.75, we would use um, how filled correction. And so for our data, we're going to use the correction in table below within subjects effect. Remember, we're going to look at the row of greenhouse geyser because that's going to use the corrected value. So if it was incorrected, that would be sophisticity assumed. And if we wanted to use how felt correction instead, uh, we would use the result corresponding with that. So anyway, uh, from greenhouse geyser results, we will see the F ratio of 18.565 and p-value uh, of zero. So what does it mean? It means that we've got a difference somewhere in our practice effects during these uh, three months. So can we find out where that is? The answer is yes. So scroll down, we can see the table pairwise comparisons. It shows that there is a difference between means of month one with month two and month one with month three. So it's been shown by a star above them. All those which, which are significantly different uh, were shown by a star above them. And so by p-value amount, we can see that month one is different from month two and month three. Only month two is not different from month three, uh, which the p-value amount corresponding with that is 0 0.07, which is higher than 0 0.05. So they're not different. And also by looking at our plot, we can see which one is different from the other one. And so that was simply what we do for repeated measures ANOVA. There is few other things that we can look at, but there were the simplest results. Uh, but what about the APA format? So the results tell us that there are significant differences in cholesterol levels of these th six patients from month one after training program until month three. More clearly, there is a difference between month one with month two and month one with month three in cl uh, cholesterol level. Uh, but the difference between cholesterol level in month two and month three is not significant. So thank you so much for watching this video. In the next videos, we'll talk about non-parametric version of tests uh, we have been talking so far.